and we are live okay i was about to say i feel like we're live because i heard the little audio thing no it's it's just because i'm a baddie and i thought my microphone was muted and this whole time it wasn't so people probably <laughs> heard me click clack the entire time the music was going yep it looks like it doc was saying click click in chat oh see i didn't know what doc meant but <laughs> i was just like I, I thought doc was just saying hi or something like that uh, all right well that's how we say hi in this chat click yep. click <laughs> click click <laughs> forever that, that that's that's a new thing every time i pop in your your channels i'm just gonna be like click click and you're gonna know so it. is that the next uh dungeons and distractions emote is it just gonna be a waving hand that says click click yep so well, we have we so we now we have bell noise and now we have click click yep uh so uh how was your guys's uh week yeah, it was all right i got poo pooed on sunday Hmm? Oh. Got nan nanny poo pooed oh. on Sunday. I was going to say, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was. No, that's not I some think. weird kink that I have. We got nanny poo pooed well, on Sunday. I, I was just assuming, like, a bird shat on you or something. Yeah, I, I, I thought, like, your, like how you were talking about your cat hated you and she walked in and just, like, pooped on you and left. Oh, God. Oh she would God. she would be. She would no longer be in this residence if she shit, like, directly on me. If she purposefully <laughs> came and took a dump on me, she would no longer I, be. I, just <laughs> being a cat, I could see her just, like, jump up on your desk or on your lap, just take a dump right on you, and, like, it, like looking you right in the eye as she's doing it, and just walk off. <laughs> I, oh. I feel like I would probably just, like, bite her head off at that point. Just like, no, we're just asserting dominance. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> wow don't challenge me i'm bigger <laughs> yeah but no we uh we we were introduced to nanny poo poo on uh on sunday before the uh night ended yep. so we get Which, to look forward to that next week or actually we this sunday we were, supposed to, we were supposed to be like looking for her for help on with the death curse stuff weren't we and now she's like trying to kill us well, yeah, she, but like everybody was warning that, you know, her help comes with a price as well. So she's pretty much just Baba Yaga 2.0. Yeah, fair. But yeah. So. P Wog! Setting off that thunder. P Wog. Thank you for that sub, dude. Let's get some hearts in chat for P Wog. Welcome on in, dude. Oh, so, uh, last week on this channel, or not on this channel, but on, in this game, you guys got a little, uh, introduction to someone's twin sister. And abandonment. And abandonment. This is, like, you guys, for the first time, have actually seen true fear on the face of Cassius. As... I, I, I uh, I kind of like it. As Avara made her, uh, made her presence known in a dream with uh Luxana and then had a little conversation with him and guys is tiny even here yeah i'm here yeah oh, okay i haven't heard you talk and i was like <laughs> i just realized did we start without asking tiny yeah. if he's here okay sorry Continue. so um before we start there was something new that happened on sunday that seemed uh to be uh, something that everyone liked. So, from now on, the, uh, if our, our going live uh, retweet um, hits 15, uh, somebody in the game will get the ability to use an automatic success. Now, this could be like a saving throw or an attack roll or a skill check or anything like that. So I'm trying to find the retweet because I know I retweeted it. So if we can get if we get the tweet uh if we get that tweet sent out, thank you, Fox, up to fifteen, one of our wonderful players will uh be awarded with a automatic success. A wild magic surge. <laughs> yeah, roller. But Yeah, it was pretty I pretty much did the uh Oh man, can, can if you get a wild magic surge, can you pick the option? 
Oh no, since, that that, that that's that that since, doesn't make it that doesn't since, make it a wild magic or since, a surge. Since there's since there's no real like win on a surge, <laughs> can, can I just can can we can we use like the roll? <laughs> See a what a, a, a what. A wild magic surge is purely entertainment for the DM. Dude, you don't know. I might want the stream of like of uh, butterflies. <laughs> you know, I could Ichirai could be having a bad day. A wild surge happens for some inexplicable reason, and he could decide to pick you know butterflies. Yeah, you're a monk. You don't have a bad day. So I think he's been having a bad day every day for the last three years. Yeah, <laughs> Zoro. Well, Thank you for that host. How you doing, Zoro? Um, since I since I kind of did the uh, the TLDR of what has happened last week, uh, we're gonna open right into it. Um, Cassius giant, was giant nasty worm. Yeah, Cassius was racing back to uh, the the location where Luxana's uh, mansion was. And, um, because he abandoned they, it. yeah, they had come, like, they walked out of the mansion and came face to face with a neo -the uh, neothelid, which is just this. I can even just put it on stream. So I have the book right here. It's which is kind just of like this a worm giant, like, mind flayer type worm. Uh, surprisingly enough, it's in Volos, it's not in the hated book. Gross. Um, so we are just going to kick this right off, and I'm going to need everybody to give me that wonderful, that wonderful thing that is known as initiative. I don't. You don't need it. Okay. Initiative. Init uh, I'm I'm going to roll my initiative, but I'm going to assume that I'm probably like two rounds out or something. Uh, give me a D4. We'll see how far you flew. <laughs> Well, I think we said... Actually, I don't remember what we said. You said, like, six miles or something? It was it was a fair distance. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, like, two rounds out. And also the worst dad ever. It's complicated. So far. <laughs> okay. My loves me more than my dad does. So just to let you guys know if you have anything that affects uh, creatures like one size larger or whatnot, this, this worm is considered gargantuan. Okay. That's great. Like, like in most families, your aunts usually love you about as much or more than your actual parents do. I, I swear to God, if Luxana actually calls Avara her aunt, I'm well, I'm out. Technically, <laughs> she is. Well, not technically, no. Um. So, uh, Ichirai, you can start us off here. Uh, give me a second. I want to see if I can do something fun. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> see how far can I run if I. I'm just looking to see if a particular conditions in that. Do I still have the advantage I got from last week's game? Uh, what was that advantage given to you from? You had me roll a d6, I rolled a 5, and you said I have advantage for the rest of the combat, or... Oh, no. That you do not have. <sighs> That's mean. Why would you give it to me at the end of the game day? Wait, did I give it to you at the end of the game day? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, you made me roll it right before the giant worm thing showed up. Oh, no. Then, yeah, then you, ha <laughs> then you have advantage. Uh, I, yeah, I, I believe think you have was, advantage. Yeah, you do. It was for do. 24 hours game time, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, because it was the next 24 hours. That's correct. So you still have the advantage thing. All right, cool. So then... Uh, in addition... So it's not a critical hit, but... I already have advantage. Mm. Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna do this. Oh, that's a miss. That, that that's, looks like an initiative. Oh, that's initiative. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Your initiative misses. Can you reset my initiative? Yeah, I did. I reset it. <laughs> it's, it's 23, not 20. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. There we go. Uh, that'll okay. hit. All right, cool. So 24 hits. Um, I'm going to do a uh, stunning strike. So I'm going to burn a point of key. Uh, so it needs to make a strength saving throw. I'm sorry. Sudden strength is uh, constitution. Let me just double check. Sorry. Sudden uh, strike is. I believe stunning strike is constitution. Yep, constitution DC eighteen. DC eighteen. Or... Yep. Because I got two fives. Okay. Give me one moment. Let's take a look at its constitution. Okay. Alrighty, cool. So it is stunned until the end of my until the end of my next turn. So it being stunned uh, is uh, it can't move. Uh, I don't know if it can speak. It's a giant worm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It automatically fails uh, strength and dexterity saving throws now. Um, and uh, any attack rolls um, against the creature now have advantage. Can it attack or no? It can attack. It okay. just can't move. Gotcha. Um, so that's that. And I have to add the lightning effect because not enough. Not enough damage. <laughs> And then I'm going to attack it again. Okay. That'll hit. Oh, and since I have an advantage, I get to do that once. What? Pop. <laughs> so 25 damage on top of that? Plus the electric. And I'm going to burn another point of key. And that's going to take me down to eight. And I'm going to do a flurry of blows. I'm all kinds of angry. I need to like, you know, let my steam out on something. And okay. Perfect, perfect opportunity. Oh, you are so lucky you have advantage. You are so lucky you have advantage. Have advantage. <laughs> all right. So 14, 16, 20 more damage on top of that. And I get one more. And uh, that'll hit. So I don't know if it's um, different in other editions, but in 5e, if you're stunned, you're essentially incapacitated, so you can't take actions. Yeah, you're incapacitated. You, yeah, you. Well, that's yeah, like it, it, it specifically says a stunned creature is incapacitated, can't move, and can't speak, and incapacitated creatures can't take actions or reactions. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I always misread that. So, well, I, I don't know what. And any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet of the creature. So roll some more damage there, yep. Azrin. Uh, alrighty. So I gotta roll. I'm just gonna roll this one more time because that would count as double die. Uh, I I don't. Yeah. Uh, so. Except for you don't get your uh I know, I don't get the bonus. Like, the... So subtract five from that. Yep. And I'll roll the fist twice more. I just want I just want to let you know you've probably done over a hundred points of damage so far. So minus minus the electric damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. Okay. Um and so you see, like, after you just beat the living hell out of this thing, <laughs> you see, like, its, like, entire hide just, like, begin to shimmer as it just, like, uh, looks, like, it, like, without its eyes, it just looks up at you. Uh, what? Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Griffin is um, since I just summoned summoned it before, like all the. I will. I will tell you right now, it is no longer incapacitated. Okay. Well, uh, Griffin, I imagine it just like being summoned and coming out of the sky, like this giant magical beast that's probably going to botch this, but I want it. To <laughs> it's gonna fly into Ichirai. Oh god, so close! <laughs> it, okay, it doesn't fly oh into god. Ichirai, but Ichirai, you see this—you just see this thing just like buzz you, trying to like hit this gargantuan worm and like completely <laughs> missing. Well, you know, Griffin is a derp. Okay, just just leave her alone. She's a good burp. Um, right. Elric. Alrighty. Um. Start with the oldie but goldie. Oh, oh god. Hi, one! God damn you. Alright, so the 27 and the, the Griffin's there too. are gonna hit. Uh, <laughs> I love how, I love how uh, Azrin's like, the Griffin's there! Um, yeah, so let's uh, get a, let's get also, a D2 also, on Also, he's range, so everybody's got a shot. <laughs> I mean, you, you've got to be reasonable. I, yeah, I'm going to be reasonable and say it's go. It's only you and the Griffin. Ah, boo. <laughs> well, we don't know who it's. Hitting yeah, we yet. don't know who's hitting yet. I I, I told him to roll a D two to see who was yeah. the unfortunate person. No, he was he was rolling his Constitution check because. Oh yeah, had... because yeah, because oh, he oh, okay. has to roll to see if he bursts in the flames. Because of the backlash. Yep. Yep. I don't know who was. So who uh who does that hit? Uh, I say that's the Griffin. You're... Of course, he says that's the Griffin. Okay, I'm well, not the know. one who ass assigned it. That's why I'm asking Elric. <laughs> oh, uh, I was supposed to assign it. Yeah, I I'll be walk. one. He'll be two. Reroll. <laughs> yeah, what she said. Now it's gonna roll a two. Watch. Yep. All right. <laughs> so uh, you're gonna you're gonna catch 13 points of Hellfire damage, and you need to make the con save. Um, it's going to be hit once by the 27, so it's going to take 16 Hellfire. Uh, that fails your con save, right? Yep. So, first roll is for the worm. The second one is going to be for try. So, worm's going to... Well, worm hasn't rolled yet. You're just assuming oh. that it failed. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought it rolled. My bad. No, I'm gonna. I, it's got advantage on try that spell well. saving throws. He's That's gonna make it. Like, I rolled a 17 and I still fail a con save against your stupid fucking fire. Yeah, it's a 21. So it's gonna it's gonna save against the hellfire, but it takes the basic damage that you put out. Unfortunate. Um, and seeing as I hit it once, I'm gonna. Push it back 10 feet, and then okay. I'm going to move 30 feet away from it. <laughs> Got to put some distance there. Probably a good idea. What's the, What was the total damage? What, 13 and what else? Uh, and then 11. 11 for burning. Right. And then somebody gets a text message. Uh, Luxana! Greater invisibility. All righty. <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't... Uh... Wouldn't be a bad plan, but, um, yeah, no, because I've still got the horn on me, and me being me, I probably, I feel like she would know that that's probably what's happening, and greater invisibility isn't really going to help, because it may be attracted to the horn. So, um, if I, like, drop the horn or get rid of it, would that be considered... Like my action. No, my I would say that's a minor action. You can you, if you, if you're just gonna like store it or ditch it. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm just gonna kind of ditch it and use my movement to kind of fly up in the air and get away from it. Okay. Um, in case that's what it was attracted to, since it started doing that glowy thing before it just showed up. Um, then I'm gonna give. Uh, I'm gonna use bardic inspiration on. Necrath. No, I, me. I, I usually give it 
try, but you try. And need... then you are totally doing the Lexus thing with the My Chemical Romance, and I can't handle that right now. Whoa, 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 uh, whoa, whoa, the, whoa, 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 do that thing, and I am also going to do, 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 do. vicious mockery the stupid big worm. Okay, what are you saying to the stupid big worm? That it's a stupid big big worm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I still I still haven't leveled up in my insults yet. I'm still like six, so stupid big worm, and its mouth looks funny and weird, and it should feel feel bad because it's bad. Well, it will make it. So it still it still takes the damage. Yep, it just doesn't have the disadvantage. It doesn't have the dif disadvantage. Yep, Nekrath. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Uh, bonus action casting wrathful smote. Wrathful smote. Okay. Smote, smote, and then swings for the sword. Okay. I'll add it to the second one. Okay, uh, it will not be fur uh, frightened because it well, cannot be course. it cannot be spooked. Cannot be spooked. But you're gonna do another twenty damage. Sounds good. This poor creature, the doggo. The doggo will run up to it and Jesus Christ! Fifteen dex save, you say? Yep. Probably is gonna make it, but whatever. Still decent damage for Beauregard. Beauregard's gonna Never hit 25 mind. damage. That that deck save, uh, It's a it's a giant worm. It's not really gonna be, you know, the most agile. Alright guys, target its dexterity. Oh, I thought you said target its dick. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I mean, if we can find it... Well, but... to be fair, it's a worm. It's a giant dick in itself. <laughs> okay. So, I am going to need Griffin, Nekrath. No? Okay. Ichirai, and Doggo. I'm, I'm ready in Hellfire. What the hell? To give me dexterity saves, if you would please, as it lets out this huge uh, spray of acid towards you. Or Doggo. Doggo's going to get hit. What's the save, DC? Uh, you made it. It's a DC 18. Cool. Yeah. I, take no, I take no damage. Yep. Uh, those who made it are going to take half. Oh, sweet. Except for the monk who takes no damage. Because the monk is OP. Hey, man. Evasion. I earned it. Did you? So it's going to be 36 damage. Poor Doggo and poor Griffin. As you see the tentacles in its mouth lash out towards Ichirai. Oh, okay. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. <laughs> I'm going to stay quiet on that comment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Too late. I, I, I can't I can't let my brain in my. Are mouth you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Is this gonna happen again? Yeah, kill yourself, jerk. <laughs> Tentacles. <sighs> yeah. Choke choke on your freaking cephalopod self. Jesus Christ. And the worm suddenly falls in a punji pit. All right, Cassius. You're flying there. Ichirai. Flying as quick as my giant eagle wings can take me. Uh, is the con save at the beginning or the end of my turn? The end of your turn, sir. Alrighty. Uh, so... Alrighty, so... So so I no longer have the, the combat advantage, or...? You no longer have the combat advantage, no. Alright. So... And it's no longer stunned because it's whatever it glowy thing it did. Another initiative roll, huh? 
I'm a little out of it today. <laughs> no. A little out of it today. Be forewarned, that's the same number of initiative. Jesus Christ, that 31. Uh, is is the griffin near it? Um, The griffin is 10 feet from it. Okay, never mind. Why, are we going to push the griffin into it? No. I, oh, you're going to use sneak attack. Sneak I'm attack. Gonna, yeah, if, it, if it's not within melee of it, then yeah. I, I don't get it. Technically, I am? Yeah, technically, uh, no, you're not, because, uh... Oh, yeah, you would be. Yeah, you okay. would be. Is the 23 a hit? 23 is a hit. All right, then I'm going to add both of these. And... God damn. And then I am just going to punch it once. Some bonus action. Because this thing's got to be dead. Soon. Oh, you lucky <laughs> bastard. <laughs> lucky bastard. So no monk next season, right? Oh, <laughs> no. I have no problem with this. Like, he is doing... He, like, you guys are, you know, working together and passing this test. Um, There's a test? Oh, yeah, this is a test. Like, I hate oh, tests. Is... College all over again. Um, so it, like, it oh, does I not gotta, like Ichirai. I gotta make my save. Sorry. Yep, go ahead. Which I'm gonna fail. Because I don't have a certain bonus. Yep. If I had that plus 10, oh, potentially. Yeah. You, I well, you have... could have asked Luxano for help. But you yeah. didn't. So you just assumed she'd give it to you. Another uh, tentacle lashes out towards you. Oh, I thought that was going to be a one again. I, I thought so, too. <laughs> Does a 26 hit you? 26 will hit me, yes. Okay, so you are going to take... I'm waiting for the Hellfire damage. From... Um, oh, yeah. Typing. God damn it. 2d6 up. <laughs> I'll take two. <laughs> I like that. What is this, math? There you go. So from the tentacles, you're going to take 21 bludgeoning. And that's not good. 22 acid. Jesus Christ. And I, I need you to give me a strength saving throw. Oh, Minus 23. Minus 43. This could be in my last game. Right. Ancient Egyptian al algebra. <laughs> yeah, this could be my last game. Because I think I'm fucked. Because I'm on Hellfire. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think I'd go out like this. Motherfucker. I mean, don't speak too soon. Yeah. If I if I go to zero, I'm dead. So and my bag of characters. Uh, you go to zero, you're not dead. You still get saving throws. It's hellfire. I thought I, I just no no no. <laughs> no no no. That that's only with the the creatures. With you, you get a saving throw. What's and I gotta, I gotta make a strength a strength work. saving a strength saving throw. Ugh. That's not gonna work. My strength is bullshit. Yep. Nope. As you guys see the tentacle like wrap around Ichirai's foot and pull him into the gullet of the worm. I've done like a hundred plus damage to this fucking thing. It's not dead yet. Ow. Nope. So ju just to confirm, we can't see him anymore. You cannot see him anymore. That's gonna make casting Dispel Magic a <laughs> bit shrink. <laughs> um, Griffin! Griffin's uh Griffin's hurting, um, but she's just gonna be like, you know what? Fuck this worm and try to you know, beak at it again. Not um it. beak's gonna miss. Captain Hellfire. Well, first of all, I just wanna say I really, really hope that uh you try burns while going down. And while coming <laughs> hey, back. Hey, may out. maybe the worm likes spicy food. I mean it it, it I, I am the DM and you you know I pretty much eat fire so All right anyhow um i think this is the best way for me to give each try a chance to get out i'm gonna attempt to hold monster hold me closer tony danza uh 21 wisdom save 
Yep. Oh, sorry. That's an obscenely high wisdom save. Yep. For a worm. Yep. <laughs> but um, it still fails. It's still going to fail. So, let's see. It's paralyzed for the duration. The spell has no effect on undead. At the end of each of its turns, the, car the target must make another wisdom saving throw. Not must. Can. Can. So, it's a purely optional. So, it's paralyzed. So it so it can't attack right now. So you guys are technically okay. Um, Luxana. And if it stays paralyzed next turn, each ride will have a much easier time uh, getting out. You muted. No. Oh, would you look at that? I am muted. Um, thank you, Fox. I was going to say, would you say that Ichirai can hear Luxana? Nope. Though he's being, like, devoured? Okay. Nope. All right, still no bardic inspiration for you. Sorry. Um, that's uh, <laughs> some bardic inspiration for Doggo. And then... <laughs> Go, Doggo! <laughs> I'm going to do this. And everyone gets 33 HP who has been damaged. Except for the monk, because you can't see him. Um, I don't have to see him. Uh, I, 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 I don't think he gets it, because he's still in... He's he's total cover. Oh, okay. Well, at least the griffin's doing better. <laughs> well, at least my griffin's okay. I tried. Necrath! <laughs> uh... Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, smack it. Something else. Smack it. Something else. Smack it. If I find out what I'm using. I don't know what you're using. <laughs> I know. Once I figure it out, I'm not a mind reader. No, I'm going to. Oh, might as well. Under smite. And then I'll just hit it with my sword. Hit it with your sword. Hit it with my sword. You have advantage because it is paralyzed. Hell yeah, yeah. Um, uh, paralyzed is actually the one that makes them automatic crits within five feet. No, I'm pretty sure Stun said that. No, I'm, I'm I'm looking at the conditions for five E right now. Okay. Any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet of the creature. Nice. I'll add it. And that's okay. Paralyzed. So that is go. It's uh, critical damage. So roll the damage on the swords again. Okay. For both of those strikes, because both For of them hit. Okay. I just, I just, I cast it again. Y yeah, just roll again. We just don't add the necrotic to it. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're also not supposed to add the your um strength bonus and stuff like that. Oh well then. Let's so see. subtract five from each of those. Yeah. Or nine. And then the the others are like subtract five from them. Yeah, because you're not supposed to add your strength okay. damage so, to your crit rolls. All right, here, give me a second here. Okay, uh, Ichirai. Um. Oh no, he has to make the save. Not. It's, uh, not, it's, it's not my go. I know. No. 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 I. <laughs> it, it's because it's because of the one thing they just did. The one thing that can actually free somebody who's been swallowed. Which is. You do thirty points or more damage to it in a single turn. It's it now has to make a, Constitution saving throw of DC eighteen. Or it regurgitates him. So let's get that uh, con saving throw. And no, no advantage on this one. No it's advantage. Not a it effect. is not a magical effect. So it's just one. Uh, so he cannot do it. He cannot. Um, he can't keep his food down, and he regurgitates the um, Ichirai, and he goes rolling onto the ground, ten feet away from the worm, uh, prone. 
but they probably have saved you. <laughs> Wait, so the creature's now prone? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Ichirai is prone right now. He's All ten right. feet away from the, ro- the worm and in- prone, and he's, like, covered in, like, this sickly-looking green stuff. Can it also give me a strength check? Um, I'm pretty sure you can't knock something that big prone. How the hell did Ichirai do it? He didn't. He stunned, stunned it. it. Oh, stunned it. Never mind, then. He stunned Fire. it. I disrupted its key. Yeah, okay. Things that big yep. are just, just have conditional immunities to prone. Right. Um, I mean, actually, he is not immune to prone, so I can roll it. Oh, oh sweet. In that case, yeah. But I get the feeling as a good strength check. <laughs> 16, what is the save on you? 17. 17. Okay, so... You see it like wobble a bit as it fall like the like it's now like laying on the ground. Um Doggo. Doggo needs to roll to charge. Nope. Nope. In which case Doggo. Is so he just gonna go, go up and bite him? <laughs> yep. Neither of those will hit. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty positive that neither of those will hit. <laughs> Unfortunate. We'll get them next time. Um, and again, you guys see like the shimmer on it, like happen on its body as on its turn it comes up. Um, again, a little pissed off as it is going to try to make um our paladin here a snack. Oh, hey, no, no. So 29 hit you? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like how that sounded like you just shrunk away. <laughs> All right, so you're going to take 29 bludgeoning. Uh, 14 acid, and I need you to give me a DC 18 strength saving throw. Give me a sec here. Guys, don't st- stop forgetting that you have bardic inspiration, please. Oh well, it. Uh, I what don't. Is the, yeah, I don't the only one that the only ones that do are uh, Nekrath and Doggo right now. Yeah, and what's the roll on that? DC eighteen strength sa- saving throw. No, it's a no, D10, no, the bard. It's a D10 for and, her plus D10. Yeah, and then you add a D10 to it. So okay, you roll so... your saving throw, and then you would roll a D10. Okay, so it's a strength check or save? saving throw. Saving. <laughs> ain't gonna help me. Uh, no, no, it may. Roll a d10. Alright. Nope. As you are swallowed. Yay! It's the mimic PTSD all <laughs> over again. Um, Cassius, you have arrived. And you, like, uh, you just, uh, like, right as you come into view, you just see... This beast, the, like this giant worm, just wrap a tentacle around uh, Nekras's leg and pull him into its gullet. Um, you kind of see like everyone spread out a bit, uh, and then you have like Ichirai on the ground, kind of like in a Yamcha pose, just covered in like this uh, like sick green liquid. Well, at least he's not in a Krillin pose, or he'd be dead. Um, oh, Yamcha. I, I assume I probably used all my actions and stuff to get here. Honestly. Your movement. You've you've used your movement, so I still have an actual. I'll I'll, I'll give you I'll give you an action. Okay. Um. In that case, uh, obviously, reverting out of bird form, which I believe is a bonus action. Yes. Um. Let's go ahead and. Go Thor on this thing's ass. Hello, lightning. Um, all right, it's got to make a DC 18 dex saving throw. Yes. Of course, it has to be the dex saving throw. Ooh. <laughs> The only roll it could have made. Um, it takes half damage though, right? Um, I believe so. Yeah, half as much uh, on a successful one. Yep. 
So it will take, if you round up, it would be, I guess, 25. Okay. Uh, Ichirai. I'm going to concentrate my key and use wholeness of body and give myself back 30 hit points. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, disengage uh, dash. So I am. You're you're putting space between you and it. Yeah. Okay. So I so I am. What's my movement? Fifty. So I'm a hundred feet away from it. All right. Uh, if that's the end of your turn, we need the con save from being on fire. Yeah. Yeah, nope. Hey, at least you're not dead yet. Uh, Pwog, no, it's uh, it's not enough. It has to be 30 or more. Uh, Griffin! Yay! Griffin's feeling super regenerated because she got healed, so she's going to try to beak it again. That will not hit. And not hit again. So useful. <laughs> Elric. All right. Um, going to go ahead and do this. Casting it on Ichirai. Okay. So Ichirai is no longer on fire. <laughs> You're welcome. Luxana. All right. Um... I guess at this point she's probably like mentally cussing out Cassius if she notices him fly up. So just basically all he hears is her just being like, how how dare you leave me here? This is what happens and blah 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 and blah and You're all this other crap. Very difficult to maintain concentration on this spell. <laughs> it, doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. She, she doesn't care. She's just like, You're an asshole. <laughs> don't, don't ever do that to me again. Um, and then I guess I'm going to toss Bardic in Inspiration to each room because he looks like he needs it and he just got puked up by a giant worm. Yep. I'm, I'm too far away. Are you too far away? Yeah, he's 100 feet away. Oh, okay. Crap. Okay, never mind. All right, well then I'm not going to give it to Cassius because he doesn't deserve it. So, uh, <laughs> Damn! Elric gets one and going to try for this the uh, spoopy i think spoopy yes um but i'm gonna cast it at a higher level i've never done that before let's see i don't even know if that does anything but we'll find out it increases the damage oh well <laughs> such a waste all those ones wow i know such a waste all right, so it's gonna save against the uh, against the illusion, but it still takes the damage. Yep, uh, half damage because um, you made the save, so it's half damage, okay. and you don't have to run from me. All right, uh, Nakrath is currently restrained inside the belly of this beast. Do I have a chance to bust out somehow? You do not. Damn it! Get me out of here! <laughs> Um, Doggo. I think Doggo's muted. Yes, Doggo was muted. Oh, he recharged. Yep. In that case. <laughs> What's going on, Spooner? Let's breathe some fire. Fire! Dang it! Deck save. Oh, wow, look at that negative one. <laughs> okay, it's going to take 23 fire. Um, okay, the worm. So, starting off, since you are inside of it, it's gut right now. Yeah. Give me a second here. 
You're officially a probiotic. A mimic food. You're going to take 31 points of acid damage. Hey, look, there's 30 plus damage. Am I free yet? No. <laughs> it's Can on I if it up? does damage. Throw up. <laughs> um, and it's gonna, it's gonna saunter on forward, and it's going to try to hit, uh, Luxana with the tentacles. Come at me, bro. So 31 hit you? <laughs> Duh! It came at you, bro! Alright, Luxana, you are gonna take 21 bludgeoning damage. Okie dokie. Uh, 14 acid, and I need a DC 18 strength saving throw from you. Alright. Alright, so like... you are now pulled into the, uh... What's up, into the gullet. <laughs> hey, how you how doing? You it can, it can hold more than one person in its gullet? It's a gargantuan creature. Yes, oh, it can. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, Cassius... Okay, well, staying in the air, because I don't want to get close to this thing, uh, I'm going to move so I am within 120 feet of Ichirai. Okay. Uh, and he is going to heal for 25 HP and take 7 temporary HP. And then I'm going to Ooh. call down some more lightning on this thing. 58, and the deck save. Um, that's the minus two one, I think. Yep. All right. Uh, let's find that d20 minus two. So 15, he... Okay. So he's going to take 58 damage. And the, the lightning bolt comes down and just strikes this thing, like, perfectly. To where you can actually see, like the illumination of the inside of its body. Um, specifically where, like, uh, the two, uh, where both, uh, Nekrath and Luxana are at as it falls to the ground, crashing dead. Yes. Um, you guys are, those of you who are not, who are inside the worm can, are no longer restrained and can spend 20 feet of movement to slide out of its mouth. Yeah. Um. And as it as this thing fall uh, like falls dead from Cassius's uh lightning bolt, a um a like a <coughs> like large black owl feather falls into your hand as you just like hear this these like the swoop of wings just like fly by you. In, into Cassius's hand? Into Cassius's hand, yes. Okay. Do you, so, you I... said, so we see an owl feather or owl feathers? Or... No, no. An owl feather, like a large owl feather falls into Cassius's hand as he heard this, like the, the swoop of wings like rush by him. Oh, okay. So this is for him. Do I recognize the, fe the feather? I almost called it a flower. <laughs> <laughs> an owl flower? <laughs> Eddie. Um. Uh, give me a history check. Uh, history. I'm not very good with history, as you can see from that roll. You do not recall the like. You do not recall the uh, the specifics of the owl feather. In which case, I will just pocket it and. I guess rush down to see if Luxana is okay. She was just eaten after all. I'm sure Nekraf is fine. <laughs> At least she didn't lose her face. Again. Yeah. I I'm just gonna like stand up, look at him grumpily, and just like start wiping my hand on his on his <laughs> coat or whatever, and just be like My fancy pirate down. I I I I I don't. I. 
I should have just stayed with Meredith. I've been eaten. My face has been ripped off. I've got weird dreams going on. I'm seeing dead people roll out of coffins. This is probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> are we, uh, how far inland are we? How far inland? You yes. guys are about two days travel from, uh, Ferrisport. Okay, so the road we're on up to Hammer's Reach, we're not near the water. Okay. You are not near the water, no. Okay. Are we out of the swamp? Yes, you are out of the swamp. Okay. This is like this is now like a like a dry like grassland area. Gotcha. Well, let's just continue traveling. I'm gonna roll right. around in the grass a little bit more, try to get as much <laughs> sick off me. Actually, each rising and he's gonna go like he's gonna break away from the party for a little bit and like you know disrobe and. You know, rub his or rub the acid and gunk off of his armor <laughs> on the grass. Yeah, you guys could take some time to clean yourselves. Those of you who got uh, eaten, I'd, ra I'd rather not walk around with like giant worm bile all over me. So I, I think while everyone is taking some time to clean themselves, um, Cassius is probably just like at Luxana's side, trying to rush her and be like we. We can't stay in one spot for too long. We have to get to Hammer's Reach as soon as possible. I can just imagine her in the grass, like, like snaking, <laughs> flailing around. And the cursing hasn't stopped. So she she's still just, like, continuously just in Cassius's head, like, don't you, don't you rush me. You didn't now, 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 now when you say, do, now, when you say cursing, are you actually using curse words or is this little kid cursing where you're calling him, like, a poopy head and stuff? I'm actually cursing at him. I I understand you're mad. But there are far more important things to be worried about right now. Like what? Have you seen my clothes? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Oksana. Then you understand that this is this is very important. I can't be going to a new place like this. Don't rush me. You can get cleaned up when we get to Hammer's Reach. Right now, we have Avara on our tails, and that is not good. She's gonna just jump up and turn her head to the side and be like, that's the person from my dream. She's real? Oh, she's real. How do you know her? I'll explain on the way. She's gonna like lay back down and keep like <laughs> getting the sick off of her. Like he doesn't want to talk to me. That's fine. Okay, just, okay, okay, I'm okay. Just gonna be over here. She's my sister. Oh well, then of of course, of course, we should de definitely wait for her. She was really nice. And no, you're, no, you're no, 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 no. She's no. You want nothing to do with her. How do you know what I want? I don't know what you want, but I know what she wants. Well, yeah, she wants to be my BFF. Like, who doesn't? <laughs> That's the problem. Have you met Elric? <laughs> it's okay. Elric doesn't doesn't need to want to be my BFF. Doggo does, so that's fine. Well, I guess she's just gonna kind of finish up cleaning. She's not she's not gonna rush herself. But she doesn't completely buy that Avara is like a bad person. All, all the while, Cassius is like kind of slightly panicked, looking over his shoulder and stuff as he waits for everyone. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna finish cleaning up and tell him. Oh well, the the horn thingy that you got so scared of is over there in the road, and then I'm gonna go take off to find the other party members. Okay. Um. So let's uh, before we get into like the travels to Hammer's Reach, let's go ahead and uh, take our first break here for tonight. Okay. Um, what is our, what are the retweets sitting at right now? 10. All right. So we need, like, if we get five more retweets. Uh, somebody in the group will get an automatic success awarded to them. Um, and hopefully it's me so I can use it for nefarious purposes. There you go. If you want, if you want to see Luxana cause trouble, 
Just press that retweet button and uh, give her the power. <laughs> I, I think Luxana's been hanging out with Cassius too long. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're going to step away here, guys, for about uh, five minutes or so, stretch our legs, get something to drink, all that fun stuff. And when we get back, we'll see what more shenanigans these guys can get into. So uh, stick with us, guys.
All right, and we are back. Ugh, don't pick up Chrono Trigger. I'm just saying that right now. Why? It, it, That's it's, what I've been hearing. It's the crappy iOS port. They literally just took the iOS game and put it on Steam, along with the crappy controls and the menu and everything like that. Ew. Okay. Yeah. Really? They yep. just ported the iOS game? They just ported the iOS game. Wow! Like they overhyped it on ste like on Twitter and everything. Like, oh, this is a you know a grand uh, a release. So it's, so it's, it's the like, iOS. They version. Didn't, they didn't even rehash the code for nope. release on PC. They just they just nope. basically it was just Control C Control V fourteen ninety nine. Oh yeah. man, boo, boo! And Shame they and they don't understand why people are pissed off about it, but. Wow, that's <laughs> horrible. Yeah, that's... Uh, so I say pit, grab into the breach. Don't don't even bother with Chrono Trigger. Oh, thanks for letting me know because I was thinking about I was debating which one to get. I wasn't sure which one I wanted, and uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just play I'll just play the actual Chrono Trigger on ROM <laughs> on an emulator. <laughs> I was hoping to have it on PC, but yep. like for realsies, that's so sad. Yeah. But, uh, in the world of D&D, &D, <laughs> uh, when everybody, when the group gets back together after rolling around in the grass trying to get rid of the, um, the worm stink all over them, um, yeah. who is taking the lead and trying to get everybody to, uh, Hammer's Reach uh, safely? I'm gonna say, well, I don't know about safely, but... I'm going to say Cassius is probably in the lead and going at a slightly quicker pace than normal. Uh, how quick? Um, not double movement, but probably like one and a half times movement. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and give me uh, percentiles. So quick question. How long has Pass Without Trace last? Pass Without Ooh. Trace? Lasts for... Is it just ten minutes? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Oh my god, a fifteen! No, oh, I'm sorry. It lasts for one hour. I don't like the sound of that. Whatever, oh. whatever. Rojan just—he sounded way too enthusiastic. Um, so Rojan on the 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 road. Um, as per our previous discussion, the the road is like is it like densely foliaged or no it no it's foliaged? it's not, not even plains. foliaged it's just not flat. even foliaged it's just, just it's it's just a flat out grassland. Alrighty, cool. like this is like a very heavily traveled road. You've come you've like seen people like walking by, all right, cool. and everything like that. And I I'm bringing up the rear and I'm like forty feet behind the party. Okay. Um. Cassius. Yes. Um. You're uh, as you guys are running a like, not running technically running, but walking at a quickened pace. Um, a small boy approaches you. Um, and it looks like he has like a uh, sack full of letters and everything like that. And he stops probably about a good five feet away from you and he looks at you for a moment and then like looks down at a piece of paper and he's like excuse me sir are are you uh, Mr. Uh, Cassius uh, yeah who's asking ah um I have a letter for you and he like hand, hands you this like nicely um like this nice peach, piece of parchment that is sealed with um like a royal crest Almost. Do I and recognize the, the crest? The crest is an owl's feather. <laughs> well, I didn't recognize that other feather, so I'm going to say I don't put two and two together, but I do recognize it as a feather. Um, <clears throat> who who asked you to deliver this to me? They didn't give a name. They They, they just stopped by our office and asked us for, to be on the lookout for a Mr. Cassius. What did they look like? Hooded. Come on, kid. Rather, Give me more than that. How tall were they? 
features well, did their body have? Like, uh, they looked like normal person, tall, a uh, little, like, grumbly voice, almost as if, like, they were uh, drinking gravel. Can I roll to see if I can snatch the letter out of his hand? Uh, yeah, give me a slight hand check. Okie dokie. Oh. Can I use strength to oppose that? Um, <laughs> you can use dexterity to oppose that. But my dexterity is really bad. <laughs> well, it wouldn't really be strength; it'd be dex to try to like snatch your hand away. All right, but yeah. So as you're talking to the boy, um, Luxana just walks by and snatches the uh, the letter out of your hand. I'm gonna I read it. I think. Given how kind of caught up in everything that Cassius is right now, he'll probably. I'm, I'm so sorry, but he'll probably snarl at her when she does that. <laughs> I could just see like I could just see like like two dogs like start like barking and like snarling and snapping at each other over a toy. Yep, I'll get much. the newspaper. <laughs> uh. So you start to read it. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Luxana, what you read says, "Dearest brother, I hope that this this letter letter finds you alive. Do not hold it against me. The worm was merely a test. If you are reading this, please come to Hammer's Reach. This is where the end begins." That sounds ominous. But we're already going that your, way anyway. Your loving sister, Avara. See, she does like you, okay? Did did Luxana read that out loud? I don't or... know. Did she? No. No. I'm just going to start, like, waving it in his face and be like, see, she she does like you. Who she was would... playing a game with us. And what? I'm going to get back on my griffin and cross my arms and just, like, look at him, like, grumpy. Snarl what? at me, asshole. What did it say? Give it to me so I can read it. Ichirai, I did. I threw it at you. <laughs> Ichirai is going to think that Cassie has got some kind of love letter and Luxana, <laughs> Luxana likes the likes the potential mate, but Cassie is just being standoffish. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's see, so Cass- she'd make a she'd make a great mommy. <laughs> Cassius is being Cassius. <laughs> Like he's not saying any of this. Is all is his internal dialogue, but he's like looking at the scene before him with the little kid and the note and the weirdness happening, and he's just like, <sighs> "Luxana just wants a stepmom, apparently." <laughs> and as you guys are like arguing about the letter, the kid just continues on his way down the road. <sighs> I thought about grilling the kid some more, but. Luxana kind of threw Cassius off his game there. <laughs> um, so is the, the kids the kids continuing down the path like past me? Yeah. Uh, I want to stop him and ask him where he's heading to next. Oh, um, got plenty of deliveries to go to uh, Ferrisport. Uh, I tell him you don't want to go to Ferrisport. It's under attack. I don't have a choice. I have letters I must deliver. I'm not kidding. Like, there's like a foul beast that has laid waste to a big chunk of that city, and there's a horrible corruption. Well, I I promise to be careful. All right. So, obviously, you're gonna do what you're gonna do. If you see any black ooze or anyone with some foul black taint on them, stay away from them. He he looks at you like you're dumb, and he's like. No, I think I'm gonna go up and you know hug him and play in in the ooze. Trust me, sir. I I know how to look out for myself. I've been dodging danger and bandits uh, ever since I've been on this job. Like, how old does he look? Twelve, thirteen. Hmm. As like. As he says that, he just starts to like walk past you. Yeah, I'm not gonna do anything. I was I was gonna show him how like you know 
like how feeble his intentions are, but I don't feel like dealing with him. <laughs> Let him die. <laughs> What's up, Cassie? Uh, I, I think Cassie's is probably going to stand there for a while, reconsidering their their trip to Hammer's Reach. Um, but after a good three four minutes, he'll he'll probably just grit his teeth and, and continue forward. Okay. Just shoving the letter in his pocket rather unceremoniously. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as you guys continue on, um, Alicorn, can you give me uh, a D hundred roll? I can. Do I want to? No. Do you have to? Yes. 33 repeating, of course. <laughs> okay. So, out of nowhere, as you guys are walking along this grassland, just this thick, pelting rain just starts to encompass the area. Oh, I like rain. And it gets, like, it, it begins to, like, rain so hard that you can maybe see about a good five feet in front of you. And it's just, uh, like, it, it's to... more of, it, it's more of an annoyance than, like, anything. It's not too cold or anything like that, but it seems as if, uh... It seems as if something or someone is pestering you at the moment. I'm just going to unfurl my wings over my head and use them like an umbrella. Okay. I'm just going to enjoy the rain getting the rest of the sick off me that I didn't get off on the grass. <laughs> okay. Um, Nekrath, let's, get one, <laughs> let's get a roll from you. <laughs> and this What's is going to die. Exactly. All right. Here comes the Crimson Chin. Okay. Uh, so nothing too bad happens. You guys, you guys get a little, you guys get a little drenched, but you're able to stay on the path. Uh, and as the sun, like the sun, like begins to slowly set over the horizon, you see finally. After, what, two years of this campaign, you finally see the walls of Hammer's Reach. Woo! Oh no. Cassius right now? <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, um, you see that people are, like, hurrying back and forth, um, throughout, like, the, uh, o the, uh, open archway... Uh, trying to uh, either escape the rain or make their way to um, other locations. But for the most part, it looks like the town is still relatively clean. Uh, Cassius, maybe, after receiving the leather, expected to see this place, you know, crawling in uh, thralls of the trot or anything like uh, And, like, large like pustules of corruption all over the place, but it looks like it's just another day in a capital city. Which kind of makes him even more uneasy. So are we in the city or are we at the gates? Uh, you you guys are crossing under the, uh, the main archways and heading into the city at the moment. Okay, so is there... I'm presuming there's like a city guard at the gate. Yeah, there are a there are a couple um, guards stationed at the gates. Cool. I want to approach one of the guards. Okay. Uh, I asked one of the guards, uh, "What is your policy on winged beings traveling uh, in uh, your city via flying?" As long as they're not crashing into things and knocking things off the roof, we don't care. Okay. Uh, Though, though, I would say keep a, keep a watch out for some of the uh, the fanatics. We have okay. we have um, a small, I guess you would call it, militia of 
humans who believe that they should be the only ones in this city. Oh, what's the guard if he's not human? Uh, the guard is a dragonborn. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but he says it's not. He's like it's not all the humans in here. There are just a couple of them who believe that they are the rightful ruler. Like their their people are the rightful rulers of the land. Um, okay. So if you're up in the air, keep an eye out because somebody may try to shoot you down. Okay. Uh, then I'm gonna ask. Um, uh, obviously, uh, non-aggression. Um, you know laws i'm presuming apply you know no fights no intentional murders things like that yada 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 yeah common um, sense um i and uh it's a open weapons policy we don't have to hand in our weapons to any magistrate or anything like that <laughs> he laughs he's like do you have any idea how how big of a building we would have to dedicate to housing every adventurer's arms and armor if we had a policy set in place Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I tell him I'm not trying to, you know, you know, to, you know, show him any disrespect. Oh, he, he's people. like, no, no, it's no, just, no disrespect I, taken. It's I, just, I, I tell him it's my first time in this city. Um, and I, I don't want to inadvertently break any of the laws. No, we, we are a bustling city, so it would be relatively impossible for us to keep any and all weapons off the streets. We just ask people to be responsible and not murder. Cool. And then last and final question um, about so in the actual timeline, not the null verse yeah. bullshit. Um, technically, Iris and what's his face would have passed by here like two to three weeks ago. Um, in the timeline ish, maybe about a week ago, a week ago. Alrighty. Um, I ask um, if he, I describe Iris and he asks if he recognizes um, a, um, uh, this particular individual. Oh, uh, Lady Iris. Yes. She, uh, she's part of the uh, Hunter's Guild here, here. Oh, and can you tell me where that is? He goes, he like, he uh, nods and he like kind of motions you like around uh, the gate. Um, and he points up to like a uh, raised area of the city where you see these six uh, large two-story buildings. He's like, you see the one, the gray roof? That's the Hunter's Lodge. Just go that way. You can ask for. Her. But that's uh, like the guild, the guild square. All right, awesome. I I think uh, I thank him and uh, I give him like five silver for. Uh, for being so helpful. Okay. Uh, you hand him a silver and he smiles and like gives you a nod and like you can see him like hot, like like slowly like putting it in a purse like making sure the other guard didn't see it. And uh, I uh, I uh, I catch up to within to you know within you know a round's distance of the party again. Okay. Pretty short. Just kept walking. Mm -hmm. So Hammer's Reach completely dwarfs uh, Ferrisport. It looks, just from what you can see by the perimeter of the wall, that it may be able to house about two and a half Ferrisports inside of it. Um, the streets and whatnot are relatively clean. You don't see a lot of filth anywhere in sight. Um, you do see a heavy guard presence. Like almost everywhere you go, you could maybe see about about two or three guards on each street, uh, kind of giving you the feeling that they like to keep law in order here. Now that the area that you are in, in um, you can see multi, uh, like a multitude of um, like small stables and uh, taverns, a couple um, a couple like small like eateries. Almost as if this is, like, where a lot of the adventurers are going to come and take their rest and rent their rooms after uh, coming to Hammer's Reach. Uh, the city itself is almost on, like, on a three-tier, like, hill structure. So, like, you're in the lower areas, and then it's, like, up a tier. You can see a bunch of grand, uh, like, two- and three-story buildings. And up on the third tier, 
you see this illustrious uh, palace that on either side has uh, two temples dedicated to it. Um, all three of the buildings, this um, immaculate uh, pearly white color with like gold trimmings on like the tops of the buildings and the flagpoles. An impressive city. Uh, walking around, can I get like? Is like, is it a pretty mixed population? So oh yeah. Like, talking, talking with the guard. So like, I, I'm I'm presuming that, um, it's like it's like maybe 50 60 percent human and then like mixed races you, you, like it kind of gave you that impression but in the area that you are in right now and you may just attribute that to this being the uh the primary pathway for everybody to come to city you see just a handful of like every race just like wandering through the streets um hanging out over at like the taverns or you know having a meal like, even the guards in the city are from various uh, races and everything. Cool. So, um... So, I've never tried this before. Okay. Um, so, I know that there are other Asmar in the city. Do um, you know if there are other Asmar in the city? I've asked. And you said yes previously. Oh yeah, that's right. You you were told that there were other uh, SMR in the city. Um, now my question is: is are do can I can I specifically feel a link with other SMR who have uh, Glandria as their spirit guide as well? Uh, you cannot. Okay. Though she, she you do know that she does tend to a multitude of uh, SMR. Oh, oh, I know. I know. I, I'm just I'm just trying to see if I can maybe uh, pick up, you know. Yeah, there there's there's no like uh, Asimus, uh, Asimar social network or anything like that. <laughs> no, no, man. We can try and start one. Celestial Twitter. Um, I'm I'm gonna start I'm gonna start um, putting my feelers out for Glandria, saying you know I'm in Hammer's Reach, um, you know. You know, I'm ask. I'm I'm pretty much asking for guidance. Like you know, like you know, I'm here. Where do we go now? You know, and I know it's not going to come right away, but you know, uh, that that way I'm just just prepping myself to receive any celestial knowledge that might come. Uh, out. she uh, it, like you just get like a um, just like a quick like m message uh back from. She's like, well, it's raining. Night is descending. I think you just do what normal people do and find rooms. I mean, unless you want to act like a pigeon and dance in the water. That's up to you. What a smartass. While, while Lexana's she, probably dancing in the room. She, she is. And, like, and you know, and I, I think to Glandria, you know very well, I am not the gracious, most gracious of dancers. <laughs> Like I, I know, I know she's chiding me. Mm -hmm. That's what she does. Uh, so I guess I'm just following the party to whatever inn we're gonna stay at for the night. Okay. So who is taking the lead in leading uh, in trying to find a place, or are you guys just randomly selecting one out of the top of your like just just point is like yep that one. I got a mansion. I don't know what you guys are doing. I think I'm actually going to split off and go try and find um, like a, a town hall or, or a, a recorder or something. Somebody that deals with the workings of the towns and the properties and that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, so how are you how are you going about that? Um, I guess just wandering around looking for a building that looks like it might be that type of place. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me a investigation roll. <laughs> Leaving Luxana alone again. Okay, uh, you you wander for probably about a good half hour. When you come to like, you even ascend up to the uh, the next area um, of the city. 
Uh, and you see that this is more like the buildings around here take more um, of a professional look to them. Like as a city, like the part of the city that you were in down below, it looks like everything is like made of, um, you know, woods and everything. Like the buildings up here are made of uh, like fine stone. Uh, and it takes you about like once you get up there, it takes you probably about a good five minutes to find the the, the official city recorder. But when you are when you approach the uh, front door, two guards like stop you. And inform you that the the town recorder is closed for the evening, to please return in the morning if you have any pressing business. Um, Cassius is still in a bit of a mood, so he'll probably just snarl again and then turn around and leave without really giving them a word. Can you give me a? Uh, can you give me a perception check? I can. Okay, as like as you like you're snarling and you turn around, you see like um, across the way, like heading down into like a back alley and whatnot. You catch eyes with Avara for just a brief a brief moment, and I take off running in that direction. Okay, um, I'll come back to you. Wait, aren't you like totally terrified of her? Yeah. But I also don't relish the thought of her seeking out Luxana to make her her apprentice. So, um, what are the rest of you uh, like? Are the rest of you looking for lodgings, or what are you doing as like your first uh, couple moments here in Hammer's Reach? Uh, I think we should find an inn to start with, preferably in the nicer parts of town. Well, the town itself doesn't look like there are any bad parts of town. Or at least the part but that still, you're in. Still, in the nicer parts, you oh, know. You, you, want, you want the high quality in. Exactly. Okay. So you notice that as the farther you go down in uh, this this part of the city uh, and the closer that you get to the uh, the steps that lead up into the next tier that the buildings start to like take on a little bit of a finer look to them and you do come across a um a like almost hotel style building called the elegant unicorn and, and you can mm. see that there are not gu two guard station at the door but there are two like almost doormen standing there um, dressed in like these fine, um, <laughs> the Ritz Hammerfell, yeah, these like these fine flowing robes. Th their hands like covered in uh, th like like almost uh, white leather gloves. Well, um, can't say the name really appeals to me, but uh, looks like the service will be good. I think I think I'll stay there tonight. Okay. Uh, is anyone else following him? Uh, I'm not staying at some super fancy frou frou place. I'm actually going to try and find an inn uh, near the Hunter's Lodge. Like I'm basically. That's the closest through. thing you're going to get to the Hunter's Lodge. Oh my god! Are you serious? Yep. The super frou frou place. <laughs> the super frou frou place is the last like inn in like before you get up into the uh, like the business di district. All right, fine. I guess I'll have to stay the night at the Super Fru Fru Lodge. Oh, uh, the horror. <laughs> oh, no, you're going to be pampered. I, I'm still a monk. I'm still a simple individual. I know. I mean, like, it, like, it's it's all, like the way that the building is designed and everything, it almost, you know, looks like people with finer tastes or like, like kind of like uh, people who want to be treated like royalty would stay at like, yeah, like and I, when I, they I, open I, the I doors see. from like when they open the doors for uh elric inside you can see that there is just finery and tapestries and skin rugs uh all over the place and uh even from the inside you can tell that um the dining area slash tavern is um sort of bustling Uh, 
um, I'm just going to get to a room and, uh, and then once I get to a room, uh, I'm going to pull out Sir Reginald and ask where his order is. Okay. So, so um, you, um, you come to the front desk and an elven gentleman, um, like takes a look at you and kind of raises an eyebrow at both you and Elric. It's like, can I help you, gentlemen? Uh, I require a room for, let's say, a week. A week? The option to extend. Yes. Um, the stay here is 30 gold a night. Uh, I have... 30 really. gold a night? He goes, uh, I, yes. So uh, I raise my eyebrow and simply look at him. I'm like, you know how many orphanages I can feed with that much gold? And he goes, quite a few. But yes, this is one of the more exquisite hotels here in Hammer's Reach. We cater to some more of, if you can call them it, higher class adventurers. So uh, does it feel like he's judging us to be uh, not of the higher class adventurers? Uh, give me an insight roll. He's probably looking at me and judging you based on me. <laughs> oh damn! No insight no. is. For, not exactly. It, 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 it like to you, it just seems like he's he's going off of the uh, biz, uh, business spiel, mm. like kind of like trying to like hype up the place. Damn! I I should have done some uh, quick research before stopping by here. Uh, Find out who the local nobility are. <laughs> Pretend to be, you know, visiting them or distant relative that can't quite rate a uh, spot in one of the mansions. Mr. Fisher. Well, um, at this point, Luxana is probably just going to be kind of sitting there tapping her foot. She's going to grab the bag of 1200 gold that Cassius gave her for the oil and drop it on the counter. Tonk. Kind of like a mic drop, like... We'll take the best rooms, and I want a pony. <laughs> a pony? <laughs> she wants a pony? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I, I must have misheard you, man. Did you say a pony? Well, the, the, the bigger version of a pony, the horse thing. I want, I want one of those, and I want it to be pretty. And keep a little bit of that for yourself. Just make sure we're well looked at. <laughs> So there are what five? Uh, are you paying for all five of you? Yeah, because they don't want to stay in the mansion. So I, I was getting ready to, you know, bargain, okay. Try to, so you know, with with that, price. with that, um, that will buy each of you a room in here for a week. Uh, and he goes and, and a pony. <laughs> so that, how much gold is in that bag? 1200 1200 okay yeah and then the, the it comes to 1050 for the five of you for a week plus the cost of the pony plus the cost of the pony yep <laughs> as he's like well it's not the weirdest request yes yes very well uh gregory will show you to your rooms and i will get on uh filling out the requisitions for a pony Sounds good. <laughs> As a uh, looks on a straight up baller, a a, a dwarven a dwarven bellhop, he goes yes. The yes. best part is it's not even her money. No, it's not. <laughs> he goes oh. yes this way. As he leads you up this uh, up like three flights of stairs, and you are all given um, rooms near the end of a hallway, two on each side, and then like one uh, one in the center. I get the uh, big one in the center to, to keep us to keep us away from all the all the other guests. <laughs> Got the end of the hallway, and like as and... as each of you open up your rooms, you can see just this massive bed that would like dwarf a king size. They are like royal four posters made of like the finest, the finest materials. Uh, each room is uh, has a grand desk. Uh, in it with a um, 
with like a huge walk-in closet. Uh, it even has an adjoining. They even have adjoining rooms for uh, like your restroom. Uh, each room also comes with a large platter of meats and um, like candied food that Fancy is. Fancy meats and cheeses? Yeah, that are just like set out on the um, a, on a large platter with a couple wine glasses and whatnot. Sort almost as if as it's a welcoming gift to to all of you. Uh, and as soon as your doors close, a soft tune starts playing. As you can see, almost a um almost an ethereal uh, music note appear next to the bed as it just starts playing a very uh, calming melody. So, so the room comes with magical rhapsody? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, it comes with magical rhapsody. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I go to the note and uh, I'm like, I, uh, I tell it... Uh, play something from and I like my region which you know like the Karator region uh it, what kind of music is from the Karator region it, it would just be like you know like you know it's like the current Karator is the Orient okay you know so basically you know you know like you know just you know that's the stereotypical background music you'd see like at a Shaw Brothers like car, you know movie okay you know? uh and like you see the uh, the music note, like uh, give like a soft golden post for a moment, and your room begins to fill with songs that uh, with music that you have heard back in your uh, your home country. Interesting. I like it. I pull out Sir Gregory. Gregory. Yeah. You mean Reginald. Reginald. <laughs> I was gonna say Gregory was the bellhop that showed you to your Sir, room. Sir Reginald. Reginald. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Did we kill a king? I uh, no. Uh, the 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 young dragoness decided um, that we were actually going to stay here. Uh, I was going to see if we can find a you know more modest accommodations, but um... well, my boy, given the. Uh... The hell that all of us have been through. Maybe we deserve to be pampered a little bit. Sure. So, so I figure we're here and uh, we're taking care of garnering forces for Zitrot. Um, I do want to honor our promise to you to try and see if we can get this curse lifted. Um, who or where would we have to search within Hammer's Reach to even begin getting you fixed oh my boy i honestly thought you all forgot about our our deal oh no i'm not like you know the bulk of my party members he owes my only my only suggestion would be maybe check with the uh the town registry they keep they keep tabs on everyone who was born in uh, like or property holders in this city guaranteed they may have things on uh past mages that took up residence in their mage tower okay um i will do that with, with whatever free time i have um while we're here we're here for a week at least so um, i'm sure we can find something it was yes yes z's like looking around it's like where are we? Uh, I tell him where I describe the district in Hammer's Reach and the buildings. Like I show, like I open up the windows so he can take a peek outside. As he, he 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 like he starts to laugh and like he slams like his little wooden head, not his head but his hand, on the banister. He's like, "Oh, the unicorn is still around and attracting fools all around." I see. Wait, you know this place? This is like an old. This is like. Oh, this old... this this is probably one of the biggest adventurer traps around. It has always been around, though. It looks like it's gotten at least a fresh coat of paint. This is for the uh, 
discerning adventurers. Mainly, if you go down into the common room, you're going to see a bunch of puffed up shirts who claim that they have gone and grand adventurers, but most of them haven't ventured for, um, farther than mommy and daddy's front lawn. Gotcha. I know the type. Well, I'm I'm gonna eat some fancy meat and cheeses, and um, like how how clear of a view do I have? Oh, you like when you open the the door, you have like a pristine view of the city in front of you. Uh, I can see the Hunter's Lodge pretty clearly from here, or um, from where you you are at, yes. You okay. can see you can see the hunter's lodge, and you can see that there are uh, lights coming, f like uh, like lights in some of the windows and whatnot. Alrighty, cool. So, I'm, God, I'm trying. This is gonna sound like so weird because I'm trying like 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 stalker mode activate. No, I'm no, I'm trying to. <laughs> well, so, so so this is a scenario. So. Each right has a morbid curiosity about not seeing Iris because he was told if I saw her, I wouldn't like what I saw. But he wants to actually see her so he can try and free himself from the memory of the Iris that he knows. So he's caught in this very weird emotional dilemma. It's like, do I see her or do I not see her? You know, I mean, he's he's not like, you know, he's not like, in you know, like, you know, crazy psycho killer in, in the head. But, you know, he this is going to become a crutch for him. This, mm -hmm. this link. So he's he's he doesn't you know, he's never had these type of emotions before. <laughs> this type of scenario. He's never been him. human. Yeah, he's lived in a cave <laughs> or like the bullet. Like he's trained in a monastery. Mm -hmm. Been a like a significant part of his life, you know, you know, you know, at least a good, you know, you know, couple years, you know, just trying to purge, you know, the evil that was in him, which is why he became an assassin, you know, when he became a monk, you know, and now all this, you know, new stuff that's normal for most people is not normal yeah. for him. Like the emotions so, he tried to block out are now just like coming out in a tidal wave. Exactly. So it's like it's very it's so I, I know like I'm trying basically not to fall into the mindset of myself when I was an assassin. And the only thing I can think of is maybe, you know, arranging an accidental meeting with Iris. Um, we left on friendly terms. So, you yeah. know, you, know, you so kind of saved your life. Yeah, so it's not like, I mean, it's not like, you know, where it'd be like, you know, you know, hey, lady, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like as I'm peering around a corner, you know, it'd, it'd be like, oh, Iris, you know, oh, this is your Hunter's Guild. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> worry, know? I would show up to make it awkward. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> he likes you. <laughs> so, 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 so that's my intent. I'm trying okay. to see if I can, you know see if i can see i don't know if that's where she's staying you know as a residence or if this is something she just goes to for, as part of her occupation but you know anytime i'm near it or around it i'm actively keeping an eye out for iris to try and you know you know coincidentally yeah. provoke an encounter oh, yeah uh, so from where you are at right now in the city you can you can see the the building itself but aside for, uh, like as for people or whatnot you don't really have a clear glance for uh at them at that far out all right cool so i'm i'm pretty much just gonna case you know the entrance and just see okay. the ins and outs and how people so are you going to the the guild i don't want to go there just yet um i'm like i said i'm 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 falling back on roguish okay. tendencies so, so you're pretty I'm... much looking at it from your your balcony window exactly i'm casing okay. the place gotcha um all right Nakrath, what are you Hi, doing I... in your room? What am I doing in my room? Um, well, knowing Nakrath, um, jumping on the bed, <laughs> jumping on the bed, he's probably having a good time. No, so, um, him since he likes shiny things, I think he wants to take a look at this uh, sword that he got from Bell. 
Oh yeah. You haven't uh, even you haven't been like uh, I told you that you had to you had to bind with it before. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, and when you look at the blade, you can see the start of what looks to be uh, infernal runes running up the base of the blade near uh, near like the sword's uh, hilt. Okay. And it seems that the f like the only thing you can um, the only thing that you infernal? can think of it is the the blade itself is slowly coming to life with uh, every use that you um, make of it. So when you went into battle with that um, with the worm and you struck and everything, it gave a little bit of life to the blade. So it just looks like that uh, the more you use it, uh, the sooner you will become uh, bonded with it. All right. Um, you said that the um, are the runes in infernal. Uh, the runes are infernal, but it isn't really like a full rune. It just looks like so somebody started etching into the blade. All right. So uh, it doesn't say any particular words from it since I can read. No, it looks like it's maybe half of a word. Okay, half of a word. Yeah. All right. So just pretty much uh, keep you uh, using it in battle. Um, if I'm using it in battle. Uh, is there any particular stats, or do I just have to use a different weapon in order for it to increase? No, you have to use it. All right. Uh, okay. I'll do that. Um, you have the, the damage output for it? Uh, yes, each, bl each blade does a, a D8 damage at the moment. 1D8? 1D8. And if I slash, is that considered 2D8? Uh, yes, because it, if e, because each blade hits it, so right okay. now you'll be doing two d eight damage with that blade. All right. Uh. All right. Uh, that's just all I'm gonna do is just pretty much just look at it precisely. I'm like, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Elric, when you uh, enter your fancy room, I'll. Uh... Put away a few, a few of my belongings, change into some clean and good-looking clothing. Okay. Uh, find a bellhop to launder all of my dirty gear. Um, and then I will. When you say that, he's like, "Oh yes, yes." Um, there is a box in your room that you it, it put any of your soiled garments into it, and it will clean it in two minutes. Oh, excellent. Um, I'll use that in that case and then head out in my uh, demon silk robe. Okay. Um, oh, man. I'm assuming this uh, town this big will have a mage's guild of some sort. Um, are you asking the bellhop this or are you asking me this? I'll ask the bellhop. He goes, oh, yes. Um, near the the farthest reaches of the uh, the second district... There is a mages tower where the city mages guild convenes. All right, I'll thank him and I'll head on over to the mages guild. Okay, so you're going to head on out. Yep. Okay, uh, I will get back to you then. That's two people on the street right now. Um, Luxana. Me. Um, I am probably going to. Tell the uh, what's his face? What was it, Gregory? The bellhop. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm gonna like slide him one of the gems from my bag and just be like, if you see my friend, and I'm going to describe cat describe Cassius. Um, just let him know this is where we are, and then I'm going to pop my mansion and go start working on chocolate. I'm You're not gonna... even going to sleep in the room. I'm going to sleep in the mansion. <laughs> um, so when you try to pop the mansion, you see the door like begin to appear and it fizzles out. And hmm. Gregory's like, oh, ma'am, um, we forgot to mention that there is a heavy seal on this on this establishment to, pre to prevent magic such as that from happening. Well, I guess I'm not going to go work on chocolate, and there's no use in me being here. There's nothing for me here, so I guess I'm going to go out on the he's street. Like, street. He's like, are you looking for chocolates, or...? 
No, I make my own chocolates. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, oh, you make your own. Well, there is a small kitchen in this in your uh, in your room that you may be able to use. Yeah, but it doesn't have all my things. I need my things for my chocolate. Oh, it's oh, very special. Yes. Oh, special. Got you. Well, yes, I'm. I, I am afraid that will not be possible in th the establishment, ma'am. Better be a pretty pony. And then I'm gonna stop downstairs and just go out. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just okay. gonna kind of wander. So, so the way that I see it is like you, like you come, you begin to walk out maybe a little bit after uh, Elric. So you're like, you're like almost on his coattails as you can see that he's like dressed in better finery and everything, and kind of sort of looks uh, doesn't look like you know what the group Norman looks like is just like a corpse on the road. Okay, fair. And, and at, at seeing that, she'll probably be like, oh, wait. And then she's just gonna, like, change her clothes too to look very, very proper and fancy, like she's important. And then you can <laughs> go outside. Okay. So we got three people outside. Where is she going? I don't know. She just, it's she's just gonna important, kind Important, of... like an actor? <laughs> Well, you know, and I, I completely <laughs> forgot this, but I do have by popular demand, so we totally could have stayed here for free. What is by popular demand? Um, it's basically like I'm a super important important um like musician or something, and I exchange free lodging for me and my comrades for performing at the place. <laughs> oh yeah, my my bard has that. Yep. I love using that. Like, we go in and I'm like, I'm Luxana! And they're like, oh, well, we've heard of you. That's super awesome. You should totally play for us and you can stay here for free and have all these cool things. And that's what I get for not remembering things about my class. Avara actually has that as well. <laughs> I don't think she'll be singing anytime soon. Well, she sang uh, Luxana last, last session. She, she can sing, but usually when she performs, it's... Um, dance and she uses magic to kind of augment the, the dance magic dance yep you remind me of the babe thank you somebody got it oh, babe. <laughs> um babe with the power okay we're not we're not we're not going full bowie here okay all right, all right. okay, okay. <laughs> so let's probably just gonna like wander around and probably see about getting her like some additional armor for reinforcements because i uh, so right now it is uh, night, so a lot of the establishments are closed. Oh well, just uh, just looking around so she knows where one is. Okay, right? so you're you're, you're just uh, you're just uh, technically casing out the area. Yeah, just exploring. Okay. It's not often that I get to be by myself. It's a new feeling seeing as Cassius has abandoned you twice now in little yep. under a day. Yep. It's been a long day. It's about to get longer. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> should we should we take um Yeah, second let's break? let's take our, our second and last break here for the night before we get into what happens to our uh adventurers who are braving the streets at night. So uh stick with us guys, we will be right back.
All right. And we are back. So, friendos who are outside, primarily Cassius. Well, it's not just him outside, you know. I know. But Cassius was charging after a uh, certain sister of his that had ducked into an alleyway uh, in between a couple of uh, buildings uh, across, like, the... Uh, the expanse of a courtyard from where he was standing at the um, the city register's office. She's gonna wreck his shit. Um, are you going into the alleyway itself, Cassius, or how are you approaching this? Yeah, just full on going straight to where I saw her and where I assume she went. Okay, so you you uh, dash between these um, two large buildings. And you round the corner, um, only to stop suddenly as you see um, a convulsing body uh, lay laying on the ground. You can see like its feet twitching and whatnot. But what has caught your gaze primarily is something is currently on top of it, and judging from the the tearing and wet uh, and like wet sounds. It sounds like it's consuming this being. So was this, um, was this in the alley itself or was this in the, in the alley in, itself in, right? in, the, okay. in the alleyway itself? Uh, I think knowing her well enough, whether it's her or not, he's just going to stand there and wait until it's finished. Right, and it just starts. Uh, it keeps tearing into the, and it stops for a moment, and it like brings its head up, and it, tur it like it turns its head towards you, and you could just see this like gaunt white skin just like stretched like almost over uh, the skull itself. These dead black eyes staring back at you, and then it opens its mouth to like let out a like almost a not really scream, but um. Just like this gurgly uh, threat towards you as four corners of its mouth open up and you can see these tentacles like reaching out from its uh, from its maw. Almost like the uh, the worm that you had recently encountered as it comes rushing towards you. I need, it. I need uh, initiative. Another one of these, eh? So you said it wasn't a scream, right? It wasn't a scream. It was like a gurgle. Okay. Oh, it's actually going first. Rip. <laughs> so it just lunges towards you, trying to like trying to sink the tentacles like into your flesh not gonna do it with that nope um, well since I don't have to worry about hitting party members with this for once um, I'm gonna go ahead and blast that at it <laughs> okay. Hey, if it's going to scream at me, I'm going to scream right back. Okay, so the cold washes over it and freezes it in place. Now, is it frozen as in I don't need to worry about it's it? It's like anymore? frozen solid. Um, can I use Agrin to just try and hit it and shatter it. Oh yeah. Like you pull Agrin out and you just slice right through it and it just crumbles the pieces. Okay. Um so he'll he'll probably just give a bit of a huff and then continue forward. Um it, it like you continue forward maybe about a, a two steps or so and you see your sister dressed in like in like almost elegant gown 
sitting on a barrel, like, with her, her legs crossed. She's like, well, I'm glad you weren't worm food. But you see what plagues this land at this time. I'm looking at what plagues this land. Are you talking about me? Of course I am. No, dear brother, you should know better than, than that. I would never stoop slow low to use something like this as a means to gain power. I don't think there's any limit to what you would do, Avara. <laughs> there are limits. They may be few and far apart, but even I have standards. I got your letter. What do you want? Just to let you know that not everything is as it seems. For once, I am not your adversary. Though I wouldn't really call me an ally, either. I feel as my dear, sweet, loving brother that I should at least give you forewarning as to what you're up against. So that maybe the fates will be kind and allow you to live. How exactly do you know what I'm up against? Because I'm supporting it. Thought as much. But not in such a way that you would originally think. I guess you can call it a means to an end. I know you well enough to know that you would never swear loyalty to a creature like that. You're only ever in it for yourself, Avara. Oh, indeed. Hence why I have not let it take over my body as so many of its other brain-dead followers have already. This was merely a thrall. There are some in power here that have already sworn allegiance. I mainly just oversee them. But I guess you can call me a wrench in the cogs. Because you are right, I would never directly just swear loyalty to something. I normally only take part in things when I can sh uh, sh uh, ensure that I come out on top. It's one thing that we have in common, at the very least. It's our natural survival instinct. But you still haven't explained exactly why you're here and why you targeted Luxana. Well, I can't just give away all the spoilers, now can I? As for why I'm here. As for your dear... daughter? It's complicated. Ah. Well, whatever she is to you, I sense great promise in her. And I've always meant to have my own pupil. And what makes you think that I would let this happen? <laughs> like you would have any matter of stopping me. You know at the end of the day that girl is going to do whatever she wants to do. She is. But and all I, I have to do stop you from trying to influence her. Oh, and influence her I shall. Cuz you know I can be very convincing. I do. So your end game in all of this is what for us to 
deal with Zatrot and you'd have free reign? Oh, no, no. I'm just hoping you deal with Zatrot so we can keep on living. Because as evil as you may think that I am, I do not wish to see this world come to an end. Avara, I don't think you're evil. I know you're evil. I stood by your side for years and did the same things you do. And yet you wavered while I continued on. Because I saw a better path. You didn't. Better path. All I see on your end is the path of suffering. A path of loss and continued loss. Deserved loss. Well, I have experienced no such thing. You have. You just don't care. No. I see no loss. I know deep down somewhere in that black little heart of yours that you are so desperately trying to rebuild that you still have a love for me. And it is the same for you. Or I should say the same for me. You are probably the one person I do not wish ill fate upon. Well, you and that little dragon girl of yours. If you care for me in any way, then please just show a little kindness and, and leave Luxana out of it. She's not even from this world. And that's what makes her interesting. She is a rarity. And rarities need to be collected. Not this one, Avara. That remains to be seen. Now, I can't... <laughs> You're a shiny Pokemon. <laughs> I can't sit here and continue to argue about the the multiple fates that may strike your dear not daughter whatever you want to call her complicated I have a gala to attend I'm somebody of some, some uh, importance here of course you are you make yourself someone of importance no matter where you go it, it, and at, it's usually at, not by choice of the civilians. At, at that at that point, she like flutters down and just walks by you and like taps your shoulders. Like that's because I am important. And out comes another snarl. Try not to get yourself eaten by these things. They're like cockroaches. They're all over the city at night. Oh, and don't inform the guards. They'll do nothing. Of course they will. I mean, what's the game if there's going to be interference? I'm so tired of your games, Avara. Soon you'll learn to enjoy them, just like everyone else. I think uh, he's probably done talking at this point. <laughs> and she just she she elegantly walks away through back through the alleyways as she starts to uh, hum uh, a lullaby that your mother used to sing to both of you. That would be the uh, the same one that Luxana recognized, I assume. Yep. Gotcha. Well, he's probably going to stand there for a good, like, 15 minutes being very broody before he starts to go <laughs> to the new road. Emo, emo, emo. Yep. Um, Elric. Yes. Okay. Uh, you make it toward, to this grand uh, tower near the near the back of the second district. Uh, just these uh, blue fire torches um, set along a small pathway 
in um, up on either side of the door. Uh, it looks like the door is pretty much op like open use. There's no locks on it or anything of the matter. Though you can feel the power just emanating off of this area the closer that you get to it. Okay, uh, I go inside. Okay. And when you go inside, the, um, the natural, like, buzz of, um, magical experiment, uh, magical experimentation equipment begins to fill, fill your ears and you begin to smell, like, different sorts of incense and, uh, herbs and whatnot just filling the area that you are in. Uh, a couple of a couple uh, hooded acolytes look over to you and just give you a polite nod before or going back to their work. All right. Uh, is there some sort of receptionist area? Uh, not necessarily. It looks like this place is just pretty much come and go. So it's just a building, not really a guild, then. Well, from where you're at, that's what it looks like. Yes. Um. Hmm. So I, I take a look around, see if there's anything resembling a, uh, you know, desk where someone official looking is sitting. Uh, you head in a little bit and you go down uh, a short hall um, past a couple more workstations. And then it opens up into a small circular style room. And standing at the far end of this room is a, is a, uh, not a gnome, a gnome in a white robe and he comes forward to you He's, looks looks you up looks you down looks around you like new here yes yes i am hmm. well um welcome to the tower what do you need well i originally came here hoping that uh i could get recommendations for the most reputable uh magic store uh magical item stores in town but uh. Okay. You know, couldn't tell if there was anyone here who was supposed to help out. Ah, that's me. That's me. Sorry, the, the layout tends to confuse first-timers. But it was voted upon, and it was more... Uh, it was voted upon that it was better to have some of the workstations in the front to give off a, you know, professional vibe. God, don't remind me how much I hate politics. Oh, trust me, I hate them. I hate them as well. But eh, it's a job. In any case, seeing as you're here to help, would you mind uh, helping me out with my request? Uh, yeah, there is one. There is one magic dealer that we um, we in this guild uh, do business with, and it's uh, Alondra over at the Bubbling Cauldron. Good to know. Uh, are there any other non-recommended magic shops in the city? Well, there there aren't any non-recommended. There, it's just we have a contract with her, and she seems to be the best resource when it comes to obtaining components and items. But okay, there there is also the uh, the bloody fig leaf. What is it with names in this city? You wouldn't believe me, but there's actually an ordinance to it. It has to be voted upon. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. The the Bloody Fig Leaf is not even the most horrendous name in this town. <sighs> and, and then if you're looking for more of a wild source of magic, you want the Bleeding Tusk. Well, thanks for your help, then. Uh -huh. Have a good evening. You too. Oh, by the and... way, um, make sure to register tomorrow up at the, um, over at the uh, city register. They kind of like to keep track of any magi magically talented people in the vicinity, just in case something blows up. I'll be sure to do that. He, he uh, he nods. He's like, eh, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. As he just goes back to, like, the small little wooden chair that he was sitting on. 
All right, now, uh, since it's quite late, I imagine most reputable stores have closed their doors for the evening. Yep. So I'm just going to head back to the inn. Okay. Um, and, like, when you walk out, you cross paths with um, this female dragonborn in just, like, this elegant flowing robe as she gives you... She gives you a nod and almost a familiar smile as she walks by. I ignore it and keep walking. <laughs> okay. El Elric is not exactly a uh, open-minded fellow. <laughs> He's not exactly a sociable person. You know, you could you could call him speciest as well. In this group, that's actually uh surprising with what he's traveling with <laughs> i mean he doesn't have anything against them just you know not that way all right luxana where have you uh where have you traveled to are you keeping into the lower districts or after you found out that most of the places around are closed and you just got like your bearings uh have you headed anywhere else Probably not. Um, just probably would head back to the inn after right. kind of getting a pretty rough layout of the town for since we're going to be here a while, so she knows where to go. Okay. Um, when you begin to walk back into the um, or back towards uh, the the hotel, you do cross paths with a rather uh, broody looking Cassius. <laughs> it's like a sad cat left out in the rain I imagine that's kind of what he's been looking like for the last couple days so I'm not even going to uh, going to question it I'm just going to be like come on we, we have rooms so as soon as she says something and he realizes that it's her he's just going to give her a huge hug and probably not let go for a while can I roll the squirm free? <laughs> uh, are you trying to keep her from getting out, or? No, no. As soon as, as, soon as she puts up resistance, you know, he's gonna let go. Okay, so but... it's just like one, like, yeah, like Azrin, but it's an awkward he, hug. Yeah. Yeah, he he's relieved to see her in one piece. Especially. Okay. All right. But, that I'm not dead, but I'm just gonna be like, eh, yeah, there we let's let's go do stuff. And um, where are we supposed to meet? naked person. He just said Hammer's Reach. I'm sure he'll find us. Yeah, probably. My mansion doesn't work in this stupid inn. It doesn't work in an inn? Where, where are you guys staying? <laughs> this, this unicorn place, Elric picked it out, which made me really confused. But they're they're getting me a pony, so I it doesn't matter. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and, and like Luxana just like leads you to like again the most like fancy looking, almost to the point to it's ridiculous. Uh, Where all the douchebags of yeah. Mars Reach stay. <laughs> All, we got, yeah, we're all the, like the, the douchebag adventurers stay. Don't worry. We're, we're bringing class to this place. <laughs> You've actually been outside of the city. We're the big dogs. Yeah. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. And when you two walk into the uh, hotel, you catch a, a, a quick... Uh, a quick glance at um, like the drinking area as it opens up, and it even it, it is decked out in some of like the the most ridiculous looking furnishings. It almost looks like a douchebag hunters uh, club, where they so they have everybody's like everybody's gathered around Gaston. And yeah, pretty yeah, pretty much. It, it, it's just like it's a room full of Gastons, um, and uh, it's got a really ridiculous looking uh, bear's head over um, like a roaring mantle and everything. 
You know what? Luxana's gonna see this and she's gonna just turn to Cassius and she's gonna be like, I'm gonna have some alcohol. I've never had that before. And then she's <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna drink. drink. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna drink. And then she's just gonna like strut over to the other adventurers and be like, hey guys, let's have whatever oh. things are with alcohol because I love alcohol and I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> One alcohol, please. <laughs> He's turned into a sorority sister. So, like, like the uh, I, I'm, I'm she gonna, walks I in. Have to, I have to cut in out of character. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna date myself seriously, date myself. But I, I just picture Luxana in as uh, as Dick Van Dyke's love interest in Bye Bye Birdie. Oh God. It, 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 <laughs> In the Shriner scene, <laughs> you know, just oh. you know, I like, like, like that's 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 the that's the picture in my head that I have right now, you know, you know. Oh God, probably pretty All accurate. Right. So Cassius sees this going on, and it, it, it like it looks super awkward the way she presents herself, and the group that she walks to looks at her for a moment, and then looks back to each other, and looks back to her. And they're like, yeah, and like they just hand her like this enormous pint of like alcohol. <laughs> and then they all just slam theirs into, into hers and they just start like breaking into like this really drunken, like victory ballad. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm good. With okay. This. This, this Luxana, exactly Luxana, can you give me a, um, Constitution. Uh, well, how much are you going to drink of this thing? Are you going to be like them and just start chugging it down? She's getting drunk. Probably. Okay, yeah, I need a constitution saving throw. In before Cassius has to hold my hair while I puke. Yeah, I'm just standing there watching yep. the whole thing. Okay. So, you see her drink just down this thing. And she, like... Like, you could tell, just right at the moment, Luxana's a total lightweight. She, like, mm -hmm. starts stumbling and everything like that. Um, but another round comes her way. Right. I'll, I'll let it happen. Okay. <laughs> oh, down the hatch. So, are you just going to stand there and watch her do that, or are you just going to go up to your room? Uh, I, I'm gonna stay there with her, um, just in case I need to pull a knife on someone. But uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna impede her. Okay. Yet. Um, are you going into the into the, the uh, lodge itself? I'll or are you probably just, just gonna like like stand in the entrance way? Okay. So, so so you're being like overprotective dad right now. Yep. <laughs> okay. He's my personal bodyguard. I got a bouncer. It's cool. All right, Luxana, can I get another constitutional saving throw here? This time with disadvantage. <clears throat> oh, even worse. Like, she is now... She's not even singing anymore. She's just... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna bring Cassius a pint. <laughs> Okay. Be like, this stuff is so much better than cocoa. Only <laughs> she walks up to you and she hands you um an empty pint upside down. <laughs> I will take it from her just so she doesn't feel bad. <laughs> well, are you going to drink it? I'll, I'll kind of show her the, the empty pint and just be like, I already did. <laughs> Marta! No, this is how you have to talk to drunk people, okay? Oh, That's holy, it was delicious. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm going to willingly go back over to the yeah. other people yet. I'm just going uh, to just kind of like... You turn around... Or are you just poking Cassius? I'm just poking Cassius, okay. and I'm just like, this, this, we have to do stuff. 
and it's very important because we gotta save the world and these these guys are cool and they they look like they've done a lot of world Luxana, saving too. Luxana, those guys are not cool that guy forgot to take the price tag off that trophy he's showing off and you look over and you can totally see this price tag hanging off like this really shoddy looking hunt- hunting trophy as there are a couple other of like these douchebag hunters like cheering him on and singing him a victory song. <laughs> they, they seem nice. This is fine. Yeah, no, I think it's bedtime for you, Luxana. <laughs> I think it's bedtime for you, Cassius. So, show me to the room that you rented for me. I I am just going to very obnoxiously yell for Judd the... What the fuck was his name? I don't remember. Gregory? Oh, yeah, Gregory. Harold? Okay, so no, just, um, uh, Greggy. Greggy. <laughs> Greggy. Yeah. As, he, as he walks over, he's like, oh, yes, ma'am. How may I help you? You'll be, you'll be I... pleased to hear that we have successfully found your pony oh i want to see the pony the pony will be delivered in the morning yeah you can see the pony in the morning okay you're you're lucky you can still see anything right now you're lucky you can see (laughs) anything Uh, uh, gregory looks up to cassie's like first time drinking (laughs) yeah 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 i had the alcohol because i'm an adult (sighs) I'm just going to like like stroke his face and like hand him a couple more gems out of my purse. Just like you're so nice, Greggy. I like you. You're very you're very sweet. Thank you for the compliment, ma'am. As like he's getting him and he's like slowly but surely handing them back to like Cassius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, w- would you mind helping me get her to her room? He goes, I don't think she's gonna make it on he goes, her own. Yes, yes, ma'am. If you wish to be in a suitable state for your pony tomorrow it's probably best that you get some sleep that's that's very true i'm i I, i'm happy i'm excited for the pony the pony will be do you know is it pretty is it a pretty one it is beautiful yay it's just like cassius then and she's just gonna like boop his nose (laughs) okay luxon come on bedtime i love luxon when she's drinking (laughs) Drunk Luxana. <laughs> yep. I, I, all the time should always be drunk. It'll make combat oh so Oh god, she's fun. gonna walk around with a flask now. <laughs> oh god. The, 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 the funny thing is, is I've helped out friends who've been that drunk. Oh, yeah. I've also, yep. I've also been that drunk. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. I've never been that drunk, but I've I been around friends guy. who have been that drunk. <laughs> I, I've I've been that drunk. The first time I've been that drunk was when I was fifteen. It was not a good time. No, my girlfriend got that drunk, and I just sat there and recorded her as she was singing to Moana. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 pretty much what's on her right now. She's just oh like I just I just, uh, I just want to say something right now. You guys are great, and I like, love you. Like like if 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 there's if there's nothing horribly personal in that video, Roger, you need to I, I posted it. I posted it on Twitter. <laughs> oh, I need, I need, I need, I need to troll your Twitter feed. I, that needs to be a thing in my life. <laughs> I think I still have it on my phone. I think I could send it to you. Um, but yeah. So, Gregory, no we're gonna, Gregory gonna... helps uh, Luxana and uh, Cassius up to their rooms. Um, and I think we can uh, end there for tonight. No cliffhanger this time. No, just drunk Luxana. Just drunken Luxana. No one died. Oh, Yet. I, I came the closest, though. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think Cassius's soul probably died in that conversation. Yeah, Cassius, or... Cassius died a little more inside. Eh, it doesn't count. Oh, but yeah, so that's going to do it here for us tonight, guys. Uh, we will be uh, back tomorrow at 6.30 for the final episode of this month's RPG mixtape and the final RPG mixtape. No, the final mixtape yeah. ever. As next month, we will begin our pirate adventure uh, D&D game called Kill Hauled. Uh, and the first couple sessions are going to be character building and world building, so tune in for that um, insanity as we have control over how the world's going to look. 
Uh, and then we'll be back Sunday with uh, our Tomb of Annihilation uh, campaign as we are currently staring down um, a Flesh Golem and Nanny Poo Poo. Try, they're trying to capture death with a death net. Yep, but we yep. got poo pooed. Don't worry. Don't worry. I have a plan. <laughs> no. I've heard that before. I, I'm a little hurt that everyone was so happy that Crest wasn't there. Are you? Because you you got to you got to reveal better Crest. Yeah. You got to okay, reveal I, better Crest. I, I do really <laughs> like the new character, but everyone was just so happy that that Crest was gone. Yeah, because I think it's because we got to like take a couple steps without having to stop and let him write down the description of every blade in the grass. Yep. Uh, like. Fair. He he kind of like dropped into like Tolkien style of note taking and everything. Like you you know you, you know who Crest reminds me of? You I don't know if you guys ever watched um I forget the name of the adventure, but it it was the um it was the one that Chris Hardwick was in on um on uh, on Geek and Sundry and he died the first session. He played this like really obnoxious bookwormy wizard and he he was like just always got into the wrong shit at the wrong time. <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> and he he basically died in like a in like a wall closing trap, and got like and got pasted. Sounds about right. Yeah, but yeah. So aside from the shenanigans that you see on uh, see us getting into on this channel, some of us have our own channels as well. Uh, Alicorn, who are you, and what do you do on the internet and? Apparently the bot's not working. Well, well, you know, say la vie. Um, I am Alicorn, and I there we go. am okay. I am the community manager for for Dungeons and Distractions. I play Drunk Luxana pretty well. Drunk Sana. And I, I I hope to bring back Drunk Sana at some time, because um, the more ridiculous, the more fun it is to play. Um, I also play on Sunday nights where I am a really broody, almost constantly annoyed ranger. Um, and I also stream on my channel very, very rarely, but it does happen kind of like, you know, when a miracle happens and I actually have time. Um, but yeah, so follow me and not see me stream. Uh, HB Fox, who are you and what do you do on the internet? So, before I get into that, I want to note that I just realized as you were talking about Samoya that in that one encounter with those Terra folk, I think my new character gained more favor with her than Crest ever did. Yeah. That's simply by you know, turning into a monster beast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Not sure how I feel about that. Um, so I'm, I'm H.P. Fox, and I'm the manager for uh, The Hunter Wild. We have a community-oriented variety cast here on Twitch. We have been MIA for the last, like, three, four, five... I don't know, days just kind of blended to each other. But we're back now. Um, and hopefully having, like, a proper schedule for once, instead of just doing whatever, whenever. It's something we've been talking about doing for, like, two and a half years. And maybe we're finally doing it. You never know. Uh, anyway, if you see us online, stop by and say hi. Ezrin, who are you and what do you do on the internet? Uh, I am Ezrin, your friendly neighborhood, uh, crazy whack-a-mole monk. And uh, I'm trying to get my channel up and running again. Uh, I'm just dealing with IRL crap. But uh, uh, when I do uh, stream, I do... Uh, um like uh not not uh not real time strategy shooters like uh, COD I do more fun based shooters like uh Division Serious Sam TF2 stuff like that I do RPGs um and uh tabletop games like Armello currently going through uh DA2 thanks to Rojan jerk <laughs> And I and I and I totally understand your hate boner for the freaking Templars, because oh my god, I want to kill every Templar I see, because <laughs> almost all of them suck in that game, <laughs> and not in the, and not in the good way. Yep. <laughs> so, 
And as Elicorn says, Diddle no, Fenris. screw Fenris. El Isabella is my bay. I, I, is best I, am, I am going to I'm going to have my female rogue rest rest sweetly and gently against those gazangas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She she's a snarky badass pirate who like gets drunk and punches out drunk bar guys. Okay, to be fair, if Alicorn didn't dictate who I had to diddle, I would have gone after Isabella as well. I didn't dictate it. I just made a very strong suggestion that I hoped you wouldn't go against. You redeemed Bucks in his channel and made him do it. <laughs> no, I just made him name his character after me. I never said you have to diddle Fenris. I don't know. It, it, was just, it we took just... a really weird turn. Just <laughs> yeah, we could we could check the yeah. chat history later. But that's, uh, that's... yeah. <laughs> Groudon, who are you? <laughs> what do you do on the internet? My name is Master Groudon, and I am your wonderful, stupid Cambion. Uh, I'm a variety caster, and I pretty much do anything from Final Fantasy fourteen all the way down to right now Sword Art Online, Fatal Bullet. Almost done with that, and I just recently found out. That dot hack gu had a fourth episode, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that until today. So I'm like, must play all of it again. And yeah, that's me. Hi. And I am Rojan Quest. I am one of the co DMs here on Dungeons and Distractions, and I have my own channel where I play a variety of uh, RPGs, shooters, and fighting games. Currently going through two series playthroughs of uh, Dragon Age and Mass Effect. So stop by and say hi to me when I'm on. But for now, we are going... Wait, what? Cough HB Fox? Oh. You're... you're... <laughs> I didn't read chat. You, you got you no, got me. I'm, I'm, I'm I thought just, you made me Fox. think... You made me think I that forgot, forgot HB Fox. Fox. <laughs> no, HB Fox was like the second, the second one. No, I, I I wasn't. That's that's not that's not yeah. what I was. Uh, no. But H. P. Fox, who are you, and what do you do on the internet? <laughs> but for now, we are going to go on a raid here, uh, as we normally do, and we are going to go and raid Spooner Sloth, who is currently playing some Into the Breach, and I know he's been really hyped about this game. So, hit that button up there. Uh, to join us on this little uh, excursion over to his chat. Let's show him some love. Uh, spam him with, I heard there were dragons in the, here. And I, we will see you guys tomorrow for the final RPG mixtape episode. Alright, have a good one everyone. We will catch you later.